very warm welcome director Neil Jordan and star Chloe Grace Moretz. You guys, I have so many rapid fire questions that I would like to first assault you with. Where is that trunk right now? Where did it end up? Is it the trunk? It's in the studio in Dublin, I think. Argo Studios, probably. But it can be wherever you want it to be. Okay, good. Let's get on that afterwards. I never want to see that trunk ever. I'm totally fine with burning that trunk. Were you st I mean, shooting takes forever. Did yeah. you end up stuck in the trunk, just doing shot just after shot? just left me in there during lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's really oh. enough. Where's Chloe at? Whatever. Um, no, actually, it was actually, I mean, that's probably one of the experiences that I can say really speaks on how wonderful Neil is as a director, being that I'm, I'm like, severely claustrophobic. <laughs> like, <laughs> actually oh, very yeah, yeah. terrified of being in small spaces, even, like, a sleeping bag, <laughs> not just a trunk. Um, so... That day on set, we really kind of got it all compacted into one full day. And we really took our time, and it was a closed set, and we didn't have many people there. It was really quiet, and he would let me just kind of sit in it and slowly take my time and feel it close and feel it open and feel that it was safe. And at one point, I remember they shut it and it accidentally latched. Oh. And it wasn't like the most short up box. And so I just started like kicking and I, I fully broke like the whole bottom of the box out. We had to like remake the box for an hour. But um, he was really delicate and really wonderful. And that was really <laughs> I feel like that kind of that kind of care that went into the scene really comes across in the movie because in any in other people's hands this movie might have been you know just really sensational and really cheap yeah. and really cheesy but there's really something to this movie that warrants like further viewing so it's like make sure you buy a ticket when it's out in theaters this week too and tell and all your friends about it and Instagram. Exactly, because it, when you trust me, like I've seen the movie three times already and I'm still finding new things about it. Oh yeah, it gets better. Because <laughs> also you're like, half of, this, half of the lines that y'all say in the movie are, are foreshadowing for what's about to happen. Yeah, they're super like, indicative of what's about to happen. Oh, it's good. Okay, great. Did she really spit gum in your hair? Was it a waste? Um, no, it was my hair. And um, every take... She did spit it, we would aim, well, she would aim for, like, below the hair, but I did get spit at take, <laughs> take, after take. Um, and it was great. I mean, I'm down to have Isabel Hubert spit, you know, got me any day. I'll do it any time. <laughs> we saw the trailer, and I was with a good friend of mine, and he, so the, as it wrapped up, he goes, let me get this straight. Isabel Hubert is, uh, she's stalking. Chloe Grace Ferenc, and I went, that's, that's it. And he goes, I don't see the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no one would be mad about it. I would be like, yeah, for sure, it's super cool. So, Neil, when you're, when you're working with these performers, was there ever a moment where you were like, it's too much? Because you have these great scenes, like the table flipping scene that's very large, but then you have moments in the church, which yeah. are very yeah, yeah, contained. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was interesting. It, it, it was actually like, because... It's a stalker movie, basically, isn't it? You know, I mean, she, um, Chloe's being stalked by the terrifying and rather wonderful Greta, you know. But I mean, the reason I was interested in it was because there's all of these different dimensions that are possible behind the relationship. You know, I mean, it's the idea of possession, the idea of motherhood, the idea of uh, a young woman losing her mother. A mother having estranged her own daughter so horribly that the daughter actually vanishes from her life, you know. The exploration of that kind of need I thought was really interesting, you know, and that, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make the film and why I cast the two wonderful actors in the, in the movie. And uh, having, you know, having Chloe and having Isabel enabled me to structure the characters in a way that, uh, to rewrite them essentially, you know, I mean, I, I mean, as a director, I don't rehearse, I just rewrite, you know, I mean, I pretend to rehearse, <laughs> but it's not a very good pretense, you know, so I walk, talk through a scene, I say, okay, we need a bit more here, and I scribble and scribble and come back with more pages, you know, that kind of thing, so 
I mean, we took a, what I felt was a very, very efficient thriller that I hadn't written myself, you know, and we just try to push it and push it and lead it through those areas of grotesquerie and those areas of extreme kind of uh, obsession, you know, that, that I felt the material would warrant, you know, I hope you agree. <laughs> it, 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 that, that's why I wanted to do it, really. I read an interview with Isabel where she said that with that, after, after that Stephen Ray scene, um, when she does a little dance, speaking of grotesque but amazing and, hor and creepy, and you're like, I love her, I'm terrified of her. Um, what, was that, what was that like on set for you to be seen behind the camera? Well, no, that was very simple because, uh, I mean, it was very logical, really, because um, Chloe is tied in the inside room and she's banging her head against the wall. Isabel is pretending it's the dog upstairs. And there were all these ironies in the situation, you know. I just said to Isabel, look, we're going to use the Chopin, the Chopin waltz, which is a very well-known thing. She's going to turn it up louder. And I said, wouldn't it be great if we could treat this whole horrific sequence like a dance, like a ballet, really? You know? And, you know, she said, great, I'll do that. You know, I'll try. I mean, I mean most actors would have said, are you insane? <laughs> you know, she just went for it. And she, you know, she really made it work, I think. Yes, 100%. Um, you guys want to make sure that we get to your questions, so I hope they're brewing out there. Uh, but let them percolate. And Chloe, I want to ask you, I, I was thinking about how this movie has a really interesting feminine energy, where you and Micah Monroe and Isabel, you all have these very different personalities, but it's such a, it seems like such a feminine movie. Can you talk about that? Or, and what the, kind of the attitude was on set and how you guys interacted? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it was a really wonderful opportunity to, to, to you know, in a way, subvert the genre. This is a, a film that's, you know, kind of like seeing a white female or fatal attraction or basic instinct almost, which, you know, I think as Neil likes to put it, a lot of the times he'll say that the Isabel Pear character would usually be like Anthony Hopkins, whereas in this movie it's a woman. And there's something really interesting about seeing a story and, uh, you know, an idea that we've you know, kind of seen before, but it's inventive and it's new and it's exciting because it's three women at the helm. And there's something that just feels so much more interesting to watch because it's, you know, it's new. And it was a really wonderful opportunity to have the three of us on set every day and, and to see those interactions where even Micah's character and I, you know, she's my, my best friend and my roommate and usually in another movie, it'd probably be a boyfriend. So just to have all those different layers of femininity and womanhood kind of see them play out in, in motherhood between <laughs> Isabel and I, it's, it's just, it, it was really interesting to play with and um, felt really powerful. It was fun. It was a fun set. Yeah. Micah really manages to make a, that character very likable. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mike, yeah. is wonderful, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had to trust Chloe and Micah because um, the one area yeah. that I was not secure in really was the area of what do you call it, millennial kind of female relationships? <laughs> yeah. you know, no, not ancient. And you know. jokes and stuff like that. Stuff like that. I mean, all that dialogue about <laughs> colonic irrigation and stuff like that. Yeah. I just had to say, look, let's try it and see how it feels and let's go through it yeah. and let's like see, make it more real and make it yeah. not real, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I really had to, I mean, we did rehearse those scenes, didn't we? For, for hours, yeah. Well, Mike great. and I have known each other what, yeah, since I did Fifth Wave with her when I was 17, 18? Wow. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've known Micah for years, and so we've been close for a very long time, and so when we came on set, we did the rehearsal process with uh, the three of us, but especially with Micah and I, and we just talked and deliberated all the different lines and figured out what we would actually say in that moment. Which is so wonderful about Neil being such an incredible writer, is that he's able to listen to what we say and then just place it directly into the script and make it, you know, fit perfectly into all of our mouths, which is great. All right, let's get to some questions out there. Who's the first? over. Oh, uh -oh. oh, wait, I see you uh -oh. right there, that brave soul. <laughs> yep, you. Uh, so, like, uh, I thought it was this funny coincidence that this movie was coming out. Sorry. Okay. I thought that it was, a, it was a funny coincidence that this movie was coming out in the same year that a very similar movie called Ma was coming out, starring the character actress that was like getting obsessed with like younger people. And I, I was thinking that like 
Do you have any idea like why there's two very uh, like what sort of like? I was stunned when I saw the trailer for Ma. I went, "Whoa!" Okay. <laughs> I mean, it looks like such fun, doesn't it? I mean, it really does. But I was going, "Okay, there's always two, you know." Yeah. I mean, if you're making a Napoleon movie, right. there'll be always yeah. somebody else making a Napoleon movie. If you're making a movie about the Aztecs, there'll be another Aztec movie. Sure. It's so okay. at the moment, there's two like. <laughs> Like older ladies, be terrifying the world. <laughs> yeah. Like a real like volcano Dante's Peak situation. <laughs> kind of like yeah, that. It's really strange. Yeah. Bring it on. It's like, is it part dinner party with Octavia Spencer and Isabella Pear? Like, I'm in. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Even if they're nuts. Yeah, yeah. It's Maybe fine. they can meet. They can go on the run. <laughs> the subsequent sequels. Yeah. Oh. Right there. You know, uh, I just want to first of all take a shout out of two movies that you released that didn't really get their due which were here in America, Andine and, and Byz, uh, Byzantium. I love these films. I don't know the design. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and, but why I love them, is, you're welcome, thank you for the experience, is because every character in them is there for a reason. They're not wasted. They're, it's like old filmmaking in the best sense in the 40s when no one's introduced as a throwaway. And that, so you make an ensemble, even in a small part, they play a very cr critical part. That's in this film, too. So I love that. And can, what did you change in the script that you developed? For example, having Mika show, that's a great turnaround at the end, that she rescues her. Was that in the original script? Okay, I'll tell you exactly. Yeah. I mean, the original script was, what, what attracted me to it was the handbag. You know, I thought it was such a great book. I'm sorry, great. this handbag? Oh, thank you. That, handbag, yeah. that was very well timed. <laughs> I'm a and goddamn I, professional. And I thought, I thought, I thought the double, the sequence where, she, where, uh, where Isabella is, 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 is kind of terrorizing Mikey with, with her camera. And, you know, I thought that was, okay, that's a real, you know, that's a real challenge as a director to achieve that. And the double dream. I thought, okay, that's a really clever narrative device, and that's what drew me to the script, as well as the fact that it was, a, you know, it was uh, a series of situations that you normally see with a man, with a boyfriend, or with Andy Perkins, or and they're all called Andy, aren't they? Andy Hopkins or Andy Perkins, you know. And uh, but I changed a, a, an enormous amount. I mean, the box wasn't in what we what we were given. Uh, the character of Greta did not play the piano. There was no detective. Stephen Ray wasn't doing a lot of, you know, he's desperate for a job. I said, okay, oh, right, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, but, but I mean, the ending with Mike finding, you know, searching the subways for a bag and finding it, that, that was in the original script. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Hi, oh, <laughs> uh, this question is for Chloe. Um, oh, I love you. Sorry. <laughs> What's like the mentality or like, what like mindset do you put yourself through before like shooting like those really like you know like creepy like stalker scenes like I just like can't imagine like having to put myself like in that like acting scene or you know right um well you know I think I think especially in a in a world like this film which it was like almost like a dark fantasy you know a, a dark a dark fairy tale in a lot of ways I think we just tried to ground it in a lot of reality and, and I think. Something we wanted to lace through from the beginning is this idea of these star-crossed lovers, almost in a way, you know, it was this friendship that was very fast and very quick, but it was, you know, palpable in a lot of ways. And when she finds, you know, those handbags, I think, if anything, it was it was closely related to finding out that the person you've been with is cheating on you. You know, it's the ultimate heartbreak. It's feeling cheated. It's feeling something, you know, taken advantage of in some way. That the relationship wasn't real. So when she ends up, you know. Realizing that she's becoming more and more obsessive, I think it. We wanted to play it out more, uh, you know, along the lines of the heartbreak instead of just the fear. So even when she's afraid of Greta, she feels bad, and she's she cares enough for her to not want to hurt her, but she knows that she should be more afraid than even she is in the moments when she is afraid. And those layers of you know dimension and the gravity and the reality of that relationship. That it isn't just like this, you know, silly, you know, intense thing where she's just chasing after her. It's it's a emotional, evocative experience. That was something that we just really wanted to pepper through a whole film. Yeah. Do you guys think that this movie, this you know, this experience and this story, would, is going to make you think twice? about doing yeah. nice things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 
no longer oh. open doors for people. Yeah. Yeah. Help anyone. <laughs> it's definitely made me think twice. Yeah. You right there. Also, I think it's particularly insidious when she sends the picture to Micah Monroe, and she's, she's so savvy with the internet. She's so be and, and she's, she's using like creepy. mean speak. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, oh, damn, that is messed up. And she's like snorks with dads. I have a question for uh, Chloe. Uh, so, so what? Uh, would you have done differently if you were in a friend's situation in real life? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, listen, I think you have to think about the the origin of how she even let the girl into her, you know, the woman into her life. You know, Francis is coming from a place where she lost her mother seven months ago. So it's, you know, some emotional cavity that she's trying to fill, you know, fill this hole in her heart. So for me... I don't want to get myself to a place where I could potentially open the door to that darkness. Um, but I definitely wouldn't help. I would not take the bag to the house. Yeah. <laughs> Dark, yeah. You won't find Chloe Moret showing up at your door. <laughs> <laughs> not after this film. <laughs> I don't like boxes. <laughs> yeah, give up hope, guys. It's not going to happen. Okay. Bag's there. <laughs> Hi. Uh, this is for Neil. First of all, uh, first of all, really great touch with the accent on Greta, I think. Um, my friends were asking me, they were like, oh, is that a French accent? I was like, not really. Um, yeah, were you going for like an Eastern European accent with her? Yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about Isabel, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, no, she's she's from the dark, deep forest of Hungary, you know? Yeah. Where terrible well, things like, are done to people and they never recover from them. And they have to pretend to be French, you know? <laughs> Just to... Just to actually deal with the experience of that. Uh, okay, cross that off my vacation list. So, what is a wonderful country, it's great, sir. I shot a series called The Borges there for four years, yeah. And some of my best friends are from Hungary. No, 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 it's... No, I just keep thinking of the Brothers Grimm, you know, and they were from the, the north of Germany, which kind of became hungry, and it all gets mixed up, and everyone's annoyed at everybody. Oh, no. Do okay, bad so, things to people. Um, my, actual, sorry, my actual question was... Um, <laughs> at the end of the scene, someone um, behind me was saying, like, oh, like, it reminds me of Inception, right? How it's like, like, a, you know, like it rattles, and you're not really sure of the ending. Um, but also the <coughs> sequence with the double dreaming, when she wakes up from the dream again. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you drew inspiration from that movie at all, or um, what were some other movies that you... If I drew inspiration from, what, the double dream? Well, you see, that was one of the things that drew me to the script in the first place, you know, because I normally write my own scripts, and I just thought that was so clever, you know? And uh, I also thought it was such a familiar... It, it, I thought it was very clever narratively, because you don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I thought it was a very clever way of actually presenting an absolutely outrageous situation where somebody has penetrated your apartment and, you know, kind of doped your coffee and stuff like that. And, but also, everybody has had that feeling, don't they? Well, you, you, you go to a party, you drink too much, you say the wrong thing to everybody. And you wake up the next morning and you go, oh, I hope that wasn't true. I hope I didn't do that, you know. And then you wake up and sure enough, it was true. And that's, I, I love that feeling with, with, with Chloe in the box, you know. She's, oh, that was a horrible dream and bang. Yeah. Oh no, okay. It's it wasn't really the dream. squeak of the toy beside me that gets me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. the box and you're like, like, oh, but I mean, I think it is like those, th uh, if, if you do, sometimes these simple stories can evoke very powerful emotions, you know, and I think that's what, you know, there's something I can absolutely understand about that double dream, you know, and that's, that's, that's why sometimes these rather simple stories can be kind of powerful, you know. All right, last one. How about in the very last row there? Oh, what drew you, or what, where did you draw inspiration for this role? How did you prepare 
Um, was there a trunk that you could <laughs> <saw? laughs> Daily in a trunk. <laughs> and I would lock myself in there. Um, I hire people to stalk now. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to get in here. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think for me, I really wanted to, I think the most important thing was for Isabel and I to really create that bond. I think that's what we both wanted to really sell is that, you know, if you haven't seen the trailer, you could walk into the movie and you could potentially think you're watching a love story, you know what I mean, about two friends finding each other in a moment of need and then be, you know, completely sucker punched with the reality of what's happening. So we really just want to take it with building the basis of that friendship and really making that palpable and, 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 and really intense and then going from there and kind of you know, not trying to jump the gun before being locked in the box, like letting all the, the breadcrumbs lead up to it. So, yeah, it was more just you know, kind of a natural progression to obsession. <laughs>